Let's talk about tone. Tone is an important term to understand because you are going to hear it constantly during therapy and it's something that is affected after a stroke. Tone is just tension, it's muscle tension. And you need to have the right amount of tension in a muscle and the right amount of strength in the hand to be able to work and do things. So for example, if I wanna take my hand and grasp this mug and bring it to my mouth, I need the right amount of muscle tension and the right amount of strength to be able to do that. So when you've had a stroke, tone can be affected different ways. The first way, so imagine a spectrum. On one side of the spectrum, you're gonna have super low, limp, floppy tone. That just means that the signal going from the brain to the arm or the hand is fuzzy, super distant, it's not there. So the arm is gonna do this. It's just gonna hang. On the other side of the spectrum, you have super excitatory or tight or stiff tone. That's when that signal going down from the brain to the hand or the arm is super excited, so my tone is going to stiffen up. So you could have low tone, or you could have super high, tight tone. And this course specifically focus on ex focuses on exercises and activities towards a low tone arm. Now, I wanna show you, if I have a low tone arm, I, I can't pick my mug up. If I have a super spastic, tight tone, I can't pick my mug up. So what you wanna do is you wanna to work towards the middle, which is normal tone, which is the right amount of tension in my muscle to be able to function in my daily life. Let's talk about muscle alignment. Muscle alignment is incredibly important to pay attention to for two reasons. One, misalignment does not communicate to the brain as effectively as a normal aligned muscles. And two, there's a fatigue factor that can happen in the muscles as well. So for someone who has a low tone or a limp arm, it means it's just hanging there. They have a tendency to want to support this arm in their lap. But if you actually look at this position, it's not a good position to be in. And the reason is, you can see these muscles in the front, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, and the fingers, all of these muscles are going to tighten or pull in. The muscles of the back, especially the shoulder, the wrist, and the back of the fingers are going to overstretch. So again, muscles in the front that are too tight can't communicate with the brain effectively, and the muscles in the back that are overstretched also cannot communicate with each other or the brain effectively. The other thing is, the muscles that are constantly overstretched or tight can, get, can become fatigued if not moved. So you don't want your muscles to be too fatigued or you're not gonna be able to work towards strengthening. So the best thing to do is to avoid a position like this in a chair and to position in a neutral and normal way. And now we're gonna take you through ways to position the arm. So let's get started. Let's start with talking about couch position number one. If you're sitting on a couch, always utilize an armrest. So as you can see, utilizing the armrest is going to prevent her from hanging her arm in her lap, which will cause tightness in the front and overstretching of the muscles in the back. So you want to align the arm on the armrest. And you can see how the fingers, the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder are all supported. I also placed a pillow behind her back and I have her feet on the floor. So if you're in a recliner or if you're on a couch and you have an armrest, use it. So for couch position number two, let's say you have a couch and you're not sitting near an armrest. You wanna use a pillow. Again, we're trying to avoid hanging or, or hanging actually down or hanging and laying it in the arm. So I have a pillow, you can use any pillow. I'm gonna put this next to her. I'm gonna take her affected or weaker arm. I'm gonna position her with her finger supported, her wrist supported. It's okay to have that elbow bent and I want this shoulder in alignment. And again, you can always take a pillow place a pillow behind the person's back, and now you have nice neutral alignment. Bed position number one. If you're laying on your back, and this is her weak side, I'd recommend using a pillow under the arm. And the reason is, although it seems subtle and minute, if you always allow this arm to hang down, it can start to pull at the shoulder. So, if you can take a pillow, 
Position it a little bit under the armpit and close to her body and place her arm comfortably on it. Another thing you can do is you can get a towel roll and place her hand on it if there's any swelling or if you'd like for additional comfort. Um, it's just a great position for the arm. So this is how I would position the arm if you're laying on your back. Position number two is laying on your side. We've gone over this a few times in this course, but for particularly when you're laying on your weaker side or stroke side, you're gonna want that person's arm to be pulled out a little bit. And again, they can position this hand any way that they see comfortable. I have her neck and um, head supported comfortably on a pillow and I place another pillow under her knee. I would not recommend ever allowing that person to sleep and let that arm hang behind them. That's gonna cause shoulder pain and discomfort. So the key with positioning on your weak side is just make sure that that arm is pulled out and comfortable and that they have pillows supporting them. Positioning number three, laying down. If the person is laying on their strong side, meaning this is her weak arm and weak leg, you don't want ever to let that arm hang down and over. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pillow and support that arm on a pillow to give it some added, added comfort and support so it doesn't swell and it doesn't pull down. You can also place a pillow on the leg for comfort, but the key here is to make sure you have some way to support that arm if it's the weaker arm so it doesn't hang. So I wanted to show you something that I think is super helpful to keeping the wrist and fingers in a neutral position. It's just another tool. This is called a resting hand splint and it's a soft resting hand splint. And you can get it off Amazon for not that much money. The benefit of this is it will help to position the fingers and the wrist in a neutral position so it's not hanging. A hanging wrist and fingers will cause swelling and swelling is horrible for brain-body connection. It's like the signal from the brain can't get to the hand and the hand signal can't get back up to the brain. So you always wanna get rid of swelling and we will go over ways to do that soon. But again, if you're having a hard time keeping that wrist straight and those fingers straight, a soft resting hand splint is the way to go. The nice thing about the one that I'll put a link for is it's not only soft, so it won't cause sprint breakdown, but it's moldable. And it's for left or right, it's universal. So you can use it for either hand. So all you do is lots of Velcro, super easy to put together, but it literally came like this. I just opened this up and you're gonna stick the fingers into these holes. And again, you can bend the, you can bend the thumb piece however you need. And then you are just going to Velcro, see if I'm doing this right, Ooh, wrong way. Just gonna Velcro it together. See the thumb piece. You can do this during the day. You can have this um, on at nighttime is another um, time that people tend to get a lot of swelling in their wrists and their fingers because they allow the arm to hang. And so this is what it looks like. Super soft, doesn't hurt, nice for positioning, and it keeps everything in neutral alignment like we talked about. Recommendation for a wear schedule for a hand splint, I would recommend wearing it at nighttime when you're going to bed because you really wanna prevent swelling and um, a poor position at nighttime because you're sitting in that or laying in that position for eight hours. During the day for a soft resting hand splint, I'd say you wear this intermittently or not at all. Um, I'm a fan of making sure that the person doesn't always have a brace on because you want the brain and body connection to remember, hey, my hand's supposed to be working, not it's crippled and in a, a splint. Now, again, you can do this different times throughout the day. So maybe in the morning you're putting her in the brace for an hour or two before breakfast. And then again in the afternoon, again in the evening, but take it off and give it some breathing room. And then I would definitely recommend if you're swelling at night, you wear the resting hand splint at night.